Hey guys, it's me, TSP. This is the spiritual philanthropist, Rob Shiva, and this is the Daily Sutra. We're going to take a look here at uh, what they're talking about, the Israel and Palestine debate. Uh, I guess this is, let's see, Abby Martin versus who? Let's see here. Abby Martin versus Emily Schrader. I'm not too sure who either of them are, but most likely they're correspondents of some kind on this type of topic. But, you know, Pierce has always had some interesting people on his show. That's where I got introduced. All of us, majority of us got introduced to Bassem Yusuf, who I became a very big fan of. But uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what this guy, uh, what these two women have to say. And I'll, you know, stop it like I usually do and, and make some comments here and there and try to assess what the situation is. All right, let's watch. <laughs> Group trying to fight for the Do you think Israel's a terrorist organization? Genocidal intent. This is usually one of the hardest things to prove in a case of genocide. Not the case in Israel's genocide in Gaza. So you're happy to believe those numbers? Of course I'm happy to believe those numbers. Israel needs to be held accountable and stopped immediately because it's the gravest crime against humanity that a state can commit. Israel isn't interested in occupying Gaza in any sort of permanent way. That is not something we want. I'm That's not why I personally, a spokesperson. I, well, he should be tried at The Hague and put in The Hague. That's a different question. Question. I mean, he's committing Different genocide. question. But you he's say you can't genocide. interfere in Palestinian politics, but you're very prepared to interfere in Israeli politics. Genocide, not a word to be used lightly. In recent months, a term which means to deliberately kill people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying said nation or group, has been leveled at Israel for treatment of the war in Gaza. Just really quickly, guys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I do believe that uh, Piers Morgan comes from a British uh, background and ancestry. He acts like when he says the word genocide, like he's never heard of it before, and it's something completely new to him. When we know that if you study the history of Britain and America, the United States, uh, in the United States, again, I'm going to reiterate, I've reiterated this in many videos, the United States were originally the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants that protested the church and the state together in Britain that is why they left was to separate themselves okay from that uh, what they call dictatorship of the church and state being together and they formed the United States here how did they form the United States here these former British uh, col uh, uh, colonists they destroyed and committed genocide here on in, in America and killed off the inhabitants of the people here so they can Call it manifest destiny and take over the country. Now, remember and keep in mind that this country uh, that we live in here in America was founded by the WASP white Anglo-Saxon Protestants that left Britain. And remember, they committed the genocide, not only of the Native Americans, but also of the African Americans who today reside somewhat peacefully here in America, but very much underprivileged compared to the rest of the, the uh, demographics here in the United States. Uh, that's not because of their own fault. Uh, it's because of the fault of the laws and the constitutions that were set in motion at that time that are still being uh, fought today to give us, as people of color, especially African-American people, uh, equality. But African-American people rightfully should ask for reparations in some instances. There are instances where it does make sense, just like the Israelis or the Jewish people would want reparations from uh, the Germans, and they got it. So I don't see what the difference is between uh, African Americans and uh, the Jewish people, where they can get it and, and where the African Americans can't. There's a big disparity going on, guys. Don't let anybody pull the wool over your eyes. I'm always going to speak what I see, and I'm saying that what I see is what I believe is true. It doesn't. I'm not trying to contradict anyone. I'm saying from my perspective. The Israeli government has repeatedly denounced the accusation, despite the ICJ ruling in January, that it was plausible that genocide could be taking place. Over 32,000 Palestinians, mostly children, are believed to have been killed since the horrific attack on October the 7th. A new report from the United Nations says there are reasonable grounds that Israel has carried out acts of genocide in Gaza. This debate will rage on long after this war is over, as will weather on the 11th and those are my next two guests. I'm joined by the American-Israeli commentator, Emily Schrader, and the journalist and filmmaker, 
Abby and Martin. Well, welcome to both of you. Um, Abby and Martin, let me, let me start with you. To me, genocide would mean the wholesale destruction of a people because of their ethnicity. That's how I've always understood genocide to me. There is an internationally recognized five-point guide to what is genocide. It says killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about a so whole part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group, forcefully, forcefully, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. By that definition, do you believe that what's happened in Gaza constitutes genocide? I do, and I think that the fact that this debate is raging on shows that what Israel is doing is egregious enough. The fact that people are actually having a debate on whether or not it is genocide, like you said, the International Court of Justice has agreed that there's a plausible case for genocide. I think that you just clearly articulated several factors that Israel is, in fact, carrying out. The mental bodily harm and carrying about conditions uh, to destroy a group of people. Clearly, the complete siege on Gaza, the elimination or the prevention, rather, of water, food, electricity, the prevention of aid, um, widespread preventable illnesses, uh, killing people. Now, uh, we see two million people on the brink of starvation. Clearly, these are all intended to destroy a group of people. When you compound that with the indiscriminate bombing in the most densely populated places on Earth, I would absolutely constitute that as genocidal killing and then peers compound that with the fact that there's genocidal intent. This is usually one of the hardest things to prove in a case of genocide. Not the case in Israel's genocide in Gaza. We have five pages just in the ICJ ruling that clearly lay out the explicit intent to carry out genocide. And I'll just point to two. Uh, the Israeli president who said shortly after October 7th that uh, no civilian in Gaza is innocent. Um, and that they should have overthrown Hamas. And because they didn't, they are essentially worth uh, you know, killing. And then you have the defense minister shortly after October 7th that these are human animals and we need to act accordingly as he announced the complete siege of Gaza. So take it. I just want to uh, point out and reiterate again that uh, these words that you're hearing now, what she just said about how the uh, Israeli Prime Minister and other people in that department from Israel are the words that they're using, the terms that they're using to describe the Palestinian people, whereas exactly the same way that the words were used here in America with the Native Americans, that they were animals, they were uncivilized, and you just needed to get rid of them. And it's so reminiscent of that. If people don't study the history, oh, they won't know these things. But go back and look at the history of the Native Americans here in America, and you'll see why, indeed, that America is helping and is allowing Pal uh, Israel to destroy all of Palestine and all the Palestinians, because this is a tactic that is used by coloni colonialists. Uh, they come in, they take over, they divide, and then they conquer, guys. That's how it works. It's a very old, age-old tactic, but it works very well now with the ability to use propaganda with such immunity, with no consequences whatsoever in the way they project uh, the situation, completely based on a narrative that's unfounded and, and uh, biased, completely biased. They do this, like I said, with impunity. They have no consequences that they will suffer for doing this. The only consequences that, su that, that will, will be suffered are the effects of what that has on the people in Palestine being killed off on a daily basis, being starved to death. And this is what you need to understand is to put those two things together. This tactic has been used from the inception of this country. Um, the uh, British coloni colonialists used it when they invaded uh, India and they took over parts of India. And it's a consistent, it's very consistent with the white supremacy uh, way of, of, uh, dealing in a war or potential war this is the, these are the tactics that are used and there needs to be a way to deal with this you know and uh for everybody to be able to take part in some way that we can reach some sort of agreement in some way that what is happening in palestine is morally and ethically wrong 
and should be condemned. Why? Because there are human lives, innocent human lives that are being affected. And I'm sick and tired of hearing uh, people cry this, you know, oh, but this life is worth more than that life type of thing. And that's basically what Israel is doing. It's basically trying to make it sound like their lives are worth more than the lives in Palestine. This is not the way uh, the supposed people of God, you know, are supposed to view or their perspective are supposed to be. They say that all people are the God are the children of God, all of us, not just a few chosen. So yeah, there's definitely some some things that need to be addressed. Taking all that into account, I would absolutely constitute what is happening is genocide, and Israel needs to be held accountable and stopped immediately because it's the gravest crime against humanity that a state can commit. Okay. Emily Schroeder, I mean, there's no doubt that if you study the direct quotes from some members of Netanyahu's cabinet, they are certainly speaking in a genocidal way. There's no question. There's enough of that being said since October the 7th. There's also... I actually would dispute that. I actually take issue with some of the comments that she made. For example, when we're talking about human animals, it was specific in the context. And if you understand Hebrew, you know. I just want to point out something. Uh, when she just started talking... Uh, Pierce wasn't even finished. She just decided on her own just now to interject her opinion. Now, she, the only reason that she could do that is maybe she feels that it's okay to do that because she's done, probably done it a million times before. But the way you communicate yourself really tells a lot about you, how you communicate. You know, uh, the first person, and I forgot if it's Abby, she waited until she was introduced to speak. This one here... Uh, what is her name again? It's, uh, I believe it's Emily Schrader. She just interjected without any introduction and interrupted Pierce Morgan. Keep that in mind. Like I said, the way you conduct yourself tells a lot about you. Oh, uh, that the context of this was speaking specifically about Hamas terrorists, who I would agree with that description. Of course not all Palestinians are human animals, and Palestinian civilians, there are many innocent people. However, as President Herzog said, it is also true that there is a certain degree of complicity with many of the people of Gaza. Now, does that mean that they deserve to die, as she stated? No, of course not. But it's not... Okay, before she says that, before she goes on any further... She's saying that there's a certain amount of um, uh, complicit uh, nature of the Palestinian people in, I guess, in part with the uh, Hamas group. And that, you know, you have to ask yourself, how do they get that information? You know, how, how can they deduce the idea that the Palestinian people are helping the Hamas, uh, you know, regime in doing what they're doing how does she get that information you have to question that and ask that you know and really ask that and, and get a, a legit answer before you can come on live tv and express these ideas what she's doing right there is a form of propaganda and also based on nothing there's no factual evidence she, she didn't say that we have uh concluded uh you know these factual statements you know, in, in an effort to understand what's happening between the Palestinians and, and Hamas and what the relationship is. She's never said that. She just made a blank statement, you know, a straight point blunt statement saying that this is what it is. And that's where I have a problem. Even with that statement, I have a problem, guys. You should, too. Not the same thing as being innocent either. But that would imply that there are no innocent people in the Palestinian side. I don't, I don't think, think that it's true, true that there's, there's no innocent people. No I, think that there, I think that there is a certain degree of complicity with many of the population. As we see in, in the polls, according to their polls, Palestinian conduct many? Poll, many? over 70% of the people in Gaza support the actions of October 7th. I wish it wasn't the case. But Emily, you're, but just, using the that, the you're just using that poll. You're using that poll to paint all civilians as guilty. Do you I, realize that? I am you absolutely do that, you're not. I That's a great point that she's making right there. Really stated the opposite. Yes, I said seventy percent. You're saying that because I Palestine said seventy percent. Emily, of course there are innocent Palestinians. So what does that mean? But what, many, you're, you're rationalizing collective punishment and starvation of two million people, one million kids. That's what you're. Some of them that are being stopped right now on the border are actually being prevented from entering by Egypt, not by Israel. Israel has inspected them and approved them. Furthermore, the reason that aid isn't being distributed properly isn't because of Israel. First of all, if you're getting aid from Israel, the people that are killing you. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't take it. Why? Because they're killing you. They're already showing that they want to starve you out and kill you. 
Why would you accept any aid from them at all? That's like if you have someone that's trying to rape and kill you and says, hey, are you hungry? You want to eat something? You know, it's like it doesn't make any fucking sense what she's saying. Excuse my language. But it's like I hate when they use ignorance like this and people will believe it. Oh, look, they're actually helping. How? Try asking someone that's trying to kill you for help. Try it. I dare anyone to try that. Israel, it's because of Hamas, who has been taking the aid, shooting Palestinian civilians inside of Gaza, and this is according to Palestinian statements on social media in Arabic, who have been speaking about this, and then taking that aid and selling it at a double, triple, quadruple the prices of what would be the regular market for those items. So you cannot place this all on Israel. But if you say that 70%, hang on a sec, Abby. So 70% of people in Palestine are of this view. 50% of that population are under 18, they're, they're children. So are you including large numbers of children in your assessment that Palestinians all, all believe this way? I don't believe that the statistics of that poll, how they conducted it, included children. However, I don't know, so I would have to investigate that. If it didn't further. include children, then that doesn't include half the people in Gaza. And that's... According to whose statistics? According to the Gaza Ministry well, of Health, no, no, which is controlled no, no, by no, Hamas. No, no, no. Half the population... Because even this 30,000 oh, number on, is I'm coming not... from Hamas. I'm not, I, I realize that, but it hasn't been disputed by other agencies. And historically, the Hamas... Uh, figures through the Palestinian Health Authority have been broadly proven to be accurate over time. Which 30,000 casualties, and they're claiming that none of them are combatants. The, How is that accurate? That's not, the even make sense. that's not the number I'm talking about. The number I'm talking about is if half the population of Gaza is under 18, then saying that 70% of the people in Gaza have a view would have to include a lot of children, right? And if you don't include the children, you don't include half the population. Well, then you're talking about a narrow number of people, comparative. Sure, but you also have to consider the fact that Hamas is actively recruiting and indoctrinating youth with this very extremist, jihadist ideology. And it's child abuse. It's an unfortunate reality that Palestinian children are dealing with. Why we're killing loads, why we're killing 12, 13,000 innocent children, whatever the exact number is, is superfluous to the general proportionate effect that so many kids have been killed. I don't agree with this, these numbers. Well, how many do you think have been killed? Just, we don't know. We do not know at this point. And yet point, you're very you're happy also, on the Israel side. You have to consider the fact okay, how many, that there how many, are many of okay, them between the ages of 14 to 17 how many Hamas, who are members of Hamas. How many Hamas, seen that proven. How many Hamas terrorists have been killed? We so don't know, oh at least 9,000. So you're happy, happy to believe those numbers? numbers. How many people believe those you're, numbers? You're happy to believe those numbers. Of course I'm happy to believe Why? those numbers. Because Israel is a de democratic country with the rule of law, and they hold people accountable when they violate those laws. Right, okay. I mean, you see, I, I think the problem with questioning the numbers yeah. from the Palestinian Health Authority is that most other agencies, independent agencies, broadly agree that these numbers are about right. And if they're right, then 12,000, 13,000 children have been killed. And I would, I would argue that it's very hard to see how the radicalization issue that the Israelis talk about will not be exacerbated by killing 13,000 innocent kids. Right, and can I just address some of the points she made because they're all just egregious lies. I mean, she's a paid propagandist for the state of Israel. I think uh, that kind of like you being a paid Egypt, propagandist Emily, for Emily. Or defending the Chinese Communist Party. You know what, Emily? I just want to point out again that Emily Schrader really doesn't know where to keep her mouth quiet. And she interjects. She doesn't allow people to speak. And this, ha this has been a habit, actually, between a lot of the people that are supporting Israel. They all feel some sort of privilege that they're above and beyond everybody else and they can speak over everyone. And we, if you look at all the videos that I've posted, you'll see that happening over and over again. Wow, this is really strange. You know, they, they, she should have more respect and wait for her to finish before she gives her ideas and opinions. Just wait for Abby to finish. Wait for Pierce to finish. And then give your opinion. The Chinese Emily, let her Emily, let, let me speak. Let, let, Emily, 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 let, let me Emily, let me speak. Let me speak. Emily, let me speak. You just spoke just flagrant lies today. Can you say the same? I'm a completely independent journalist. You are literally a paid propagandist for the Israeli military. That you just had the audacity libel. to sit down with an Israeli military official. Israeli military, I, and I would be happy oh, so you just were working for free? 
You literally said that you work for the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, that you work with Stand With Us, which is an appendage of the Israeli government. Let me address the, the things that you just threw out there, which are lies. Yes, of course, they receive grants from the Knesset. No, they don't. Emily, that is absolutely you are lying. false. Egypt, Israel has, br look it up on, Look it up on the internet, Emily. I'm not sure why you're lying uh, again, but this is what you guys sure do. You deflect, you lie, you smear. Emily, we really can't just keep it's speaking over each other the entire it's not time. Legal. Then stop Emily, lying, Abby. please you let me speak. Wow. This, this woman uh, has a problem. She can't keep her mouth quiet to give the other woman respect. I mean, and this, like I said, this is really something that you see continuously with the, uh, the people that, that are... Uh, speaking in defense of Israel's, you know, uh, genocidal occupation. And uh, every time you see this, it tells you a lot about who they are and how they conduct their, you know, how they're conducting themselves. And, you know, she looks like she has or feels that she has some superiority in here. It's very, very interesting. That, that That's a good, to me, a pretty decent uh, analysis of what we're seeing here. You know, just, just ask yourself who in their right mind would go and and on national TV, international TV, really, and speak over anyone when everybody's given a fair chance at giving their opinion. Why would you do that? Only if you've done it a million times before and it's second nature to to, to you in, in what you do. Lying. Israel has <laughs> Israel has has bragged the fact that Egypt just follows their orders. Okay, so we know that the aid is being prevented not only by fanatical. Israelis who are blocking the aid trucks proudly, um, but from Israel themselves, Emily. And we know that almost as many civilians have been shot by Israeli forces just trying to scavenge for aid and food than civilians have died on October 7th. This is regular routine massacres, routine massacres that are happening of just desperate, starving Palestinians that are amassing to seek food. Is there anything that is more depraved than but that, that's than to shoot Earlier desperate week, seven people million, seeking seven food. You can't, you can't just keep saying Hamas. Gaza. Seven million pounds you, in one day. Let me try, let me try if I can. 500 trucks per and day should be getting in. 500 back trucks to, per day. Let me, come in, come in, if I can, bring it back to the debate, which is about the genocide. Uh, on March the 26th, 2024, UN Human Rights Report called for Israel to be placed under an arms embargo on the grounds it has carried out acts of genocide in Gaza. Uh, Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Palestinian Territory, said in her report, there were reasonable grounds to believe that Israel was carrying out three of the five acts, which I named earlier, defined as genocide. And she said these were killing Palestinians, causing them seriously bodily or mental harm, deliberately inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about the physical destruction of the population in whole or in part. So. To that point, Emily, just forget the ad hominem stuff for a moment. On this, you've got the UN, you've got the ICJ, you've got uh, increasingly the Americans, actually, trying to distance themselves from what's happening here. A, a growing sense that there is, if not full-blown genocide, a version of genocide happening here that meets quite a few criteria. I mean, I think the definition of genocide requires intent to destroy a nation. Um, and that is not what we're seeing. It's not what we've seen since day one. You have to remember the fact that this war was not there started was a cabinet by Israel. Minister who Gaza actually destroyed said he would be Emily. happy to drop a nuclear bomb on Gaza. That would have been the destruction of well, the population. Well, there are plenty of stupid comments from many Israeli politicians that I don't agree well, with. Well, you said earlier that nobody on But this is not the same thing. We that, did not start on, this Emily, war. Point, this is not a war we Emily, wanted. It I is understand. not a war we started. I've made that point very Israel finish. does have the ability to commit genocide, and they are not. Let Why just... would we send 17,000 trucks That's such a not crazy thing to say. You have a gun to the head of Palestinians saying, we could commit genocide. You know, don't all talk over each other. I want to finish my point about the... You know, Abby just made a great uh, recognition of the statement that Emily just made. She's saying that you have a... She said that you have a gun pointed at, at their head and saying... And basically, after having the gun pointed at their head saying that, you know, we can commit genocide... You know, how psychotic is that? And look at the look on her face. She's smiling as if it's funny. Like, this is a joke. To most, most of the people in Israel have the same attitude as she does about that they feel sorry about. As a matter of fact, look at how they treat the African Americans here in this country. It's no different from what you're seeing right now. And it's a thing, and I'm going to keep saying it, that people of color around the world are consistently being targeted just like this by the same people. You know, it's unfortunate. We do have some people, maybe, I don't really know much about Abby, but from what I see here, yeah, I kind of 
thinking that she might have her head on her shoulders here. She might have a heart. You know, so far it looks good. I haven't heard everything she has to say, but everything so far has been really good. The, the, the cabinet member who said that was quite crystal clear in his genocidal intent. He thought it would be fine to drop a bomb, a nuclear bomb, on Gaza. You said earlier that nobody on the cabinet, nobody under Netanyahu from the start of this war had ever espoused any genocidal thoughts or statements. He did that. Guy. I didn't say that no one in, in the government has said that. I said that the quotes she specifically mentioned are inaccurate. Right, but what about the guy who got fired specifically for saying that about and dropping a nuclear bomb? Right, so, so do you accept there have been people with that mindset on the cabinet? I in, think that there, there are people who have made all kinds of egregious statements on both sides. And I can give you a few examples of genocidal yeah, intent if you want from the other side. Well, that's really the only side we, we can, that has proven genocidal we can, we can come to that. We can come to that. But on that point, do you accept then that there are people in Israeli government, albeit he was fired for it, who have espoused genocidal sentiment? They have. I don't know of anyone who is in the current Israeli government well, that no, would support fired. any form of genocide. Right. Has anyone well, ever? Of course, ruling. people have on both Five sides. Pages. Okay, Abby? Five pages. Yeah. Five pages of people Five including pages. social media posts of celebrities, including some of the people I know. That doesn't, that doesn't qualify as a legitimate intent to carry out a genocide. They included one from a comedian Emily, on the there as well. Strip. Not Emily, to mention the fact that if you Emily, talk about the, the illegitimacy... Strip. It's completely decimated. Every cultural aspect of life in Gaza has been completely obliterated to make it uninhabitable and unsurvivable for future generations there. I mean, that is hard that to, is that, I, I mean, just to say, family. that is hard to argue. When you look at what's happened in northern Gaza in particular, it's pretty much been leveled. I've been there. I've what, seen it with my own eyes. Why would anyone expect regular Palestinians to be able to go back to homes that don't exist? Where are they going to go? Many of them already have started going back. And they need to reconstruct Gaza the same way that they needed to reconstruct Gaza after 2021. But they're going to have to do so together with partners, whether it's Israel, the United States, or other Arab nations, in a post-Hamas reality. And, and if we're talking about the problem in, in, in Gaza and how the Palestinians are suffering, you cannot remove Hamas from this equation. Hamas is the, the group that has been persecuting the Palestinian people as well. Well, that is true, Abby. I don't think there's any question. I, I don't think there's any question Hamas has been suppressing and oppressing its own people. I think that they have become increasingly vocal in their desire to cause maximum damage to Israel and to Jewish people. They've said since October the 7th through their official spokesman that they will do this again and again and again. That actually is genocidal rhetoric. If you're pledging to destroy a people in as many numbers as you can, as often as you can, that is a form of genocide, isn't it? Look, what precipitated even the origin of Hamas? Hamas didn't just grow out of thin air. I mean, it, it was precipitated by yeah, but what about my question, decades of brutal occupation and ethnic cleansing. Yeah, but what the about my question? The question whether or not Hamas is genocidal as, uh, in its intent, I disagree. And Emily is saying, look, it, look, Hamas is reacting. They're an armed resistance group trying to fight for well, the terrorists. Yeah, I'm not Hamas justifying anything that they've done. Um, the United States also called Nelson Mandela and the ANC a terrorist organization. Do you I think they're think an armed resistance group trying to fight for the liberation of Palestine. Matter of fact, they call any group here in America a terrorist organization if they try to defy the United States, even when the United States is committing genocide back in the day uh, against the Native Americans and the uh, African Americans. So what uh, Emily is saying or trying to insinuate doesn't really hold up. Uh, Abby needs to be a little bit stronger in her defense here and needs to really uh, give some more confidence in what she's saying because she did bring up one point about Mandela, but there are plenty of examples right here in America where people are actually executed by the United States government. And of course, you can't prove any of that because they claim that they can find no proof of that. But we know that the president of the United States himself at the time was John F. Kennedy. I want to reiterate that, if not one of the most famous uh, presidents uh, who tried to help the most into bringing peace across the land from here all the way around the globe in the dealings that he had and how did the they deal with it here as as he said and stated in one of his last speeches that JFK made he stated they move in secret like gorillas at night and covert and they attack 
and they have secret societies. And this is exactly what he uh, gave that to the people shortly after he his head was blown off in front of his wife and for the entire world to see. They did not care. They wanted to use him to make an example. And that's what these type of people do to show the brutalization, the violence, so people understand what they're dealing with. And it wouldn't surprise me. That stuff doesn't last long, guys. You may have that power for a moment in time, but it doesn't last long. There are other people always that are going to be more more uh, violent and more chaotic, and they're going to come out and they're going to do things. And that's what we're seeing. You know, if America is truly a leader, we led. You know, we as a country in the United States, not we the people, but the the government, has led the way for other psychotic, you know, uh, warmongering countries to exist why because of what america itself is has done and is doing today and these are all taking part remember i said your conduct really depicts everything about you if your conduct is that of the nature of what we've seen in this country against its own people well don't be surprised when other countries start doing the same thing you know don't complain you led the way palestine do you think they're not going to sit there and give an obligatory do you, do you think, think Israel's a terrorist organization, of course Emily? Not. Do you think Israel's a terrorist organization? Not. Well, Can you answer my question? Do yeah, you think Hamas is a terrorist organization? I already did. I already did. Do you Let think, me explain something. Do you think that the acts committed on October 7th were legitimate? You think that gang rape, that do you think mass that the acts rape, that Israel sexual did violence is a method of war? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you think October 6th, 5th, 4th, 8th, 9th, 10th? Let me ask you the question which has... It's so funny that that this uh emily shred is bringing up gang rape into all of this and uh you know she's jumping all over the place and looking for ways to find a moral stance and to create a moral stance and i think that uh abby is doing a great job she just needs to be a lot more uh, uh what do you call it fervent about what she says and have more confidence in it it's made me infamous famous whatever you want to do but do you condemn hamas for what they did on October the 7th. That is a loaded question. Again, before she even answers, why do you even ask that question? Of course, anyone in their right fucking mind would condemn Hamas for what they did on that day. Anyone. But it doesn't uphold the exact sentiments that Israel's trying to get out of people. They're using that as literally a moral compass and a moral gauge to basically attack your character when they ask that question. That's all that is. That's really an ad hominem attack disguised as a moral stance and a question that's all it is and if you understand what an ad hominem attacks it attacks your character okay they're attacking the person by asking that question to explain it further okay when they ask you that question it's an automatic gauge boom you don't you don't you know if you support it then you're this and you're that and you're this and you're part of the problem bullshit you know you can't just put it in a dual dualistic nature where it's just you know, either black or white. It doesn't work that way, you know? And this is what people need to really, really understand. I'm not going to sit here and give an obligatory condemnation of Hamas. I it was a terrorist a attack. You were calling of what I think. Surely on pure humanity's ground. You cannot watch listen, the devastating listen, murder of 1,200 listen, people and not say it was a despicable terror what begets, and condemn the people who did it. Look. look. Look, listen, listen, I'm not going to give an obligatory, obligatory condemnation of Hamas. What I will do is will condemn the policies that Hamas? precipitate what violence. What I will do is condemn the roots of the violence. violence. Because inevitably you will have blowback when you deny millions of people basic human rights. Mm. When they're living under brutal medieval siege and barbaric military occupation, a fascist military occupation in the West Bank. Hamas doesn't govern the West Bank. Look at what Israel has done in the West Bank since October 7th. You can't condemn Hamas for what they did on October 7th. This, this is, is not about Hamas. Well, it's all I about condemn Hamas. what will be get violence Hamas. inevitably. I'm not going to sit here and condemn the Hamas. The entire war. I'm sorry. The, this, in, this entire war has been no, the argument not. many There's, times. No, no, no. But you no, cannot no, no. dispute what doing, this. What you're doing is. What am I doing? What you're doing is conflating and pretending like there are two equal sides. Oh, they've just been fighting for decades. There's always reasons on both sides to start the violence. No, that's not true. There's one side that's an occupying, colonizing force that continuously and violently expels and subjugates and brutalizes and terrorizes the other side. They are living under the boot 
of Israeli authorities, whether you're in Gaza and occupied completely militarily by the outside, or whether you're living under a fascist military dictatorship in the West Bank. So do you, do, if that you believe, is the okay, so if you believe, violence. okay, that let me ask you this, 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 if you believe then that Hamas are a, uh, armed resistance, as you put it, and they have, presumably then you believe what they did on October the 7th was justified, do you? I didn't say that. No, no, no. Well, wouldn't that be I'm the not sitting here justifying anything. Isn't the logical extension of your that. argument? If you believe they're an armed resistance and they are, they are doing they are what they're, they're doing because, because they are responding, responding to acts of terror by another side, side surely you would say that what they did was justified. justified. Or if it's not justified, what is it? You either condemn it or you think it's justified. I don't think you can sit in the middle, can you? Um, I... Look, I don't need to sit here and give a condemnation of Hamas. I, I, I can explain why Hamas exists. I don't have to support what they did. I don't have to justify or rationalize it. Yes. So you're not gonna... You know, at one point in time here in America, uh, not only the Black Panthers, but anybody, even lawyers, that wanted to fight against racism were considered, as they're trying to paint the picture as the enemy. And look what happens... 50, 60 years later, you know, not too long ago, uh, right before I was born, right? And we see that in today's world, there is somewhat of a melting pot now here in America. Uh, the pot may not be evenly distributed all over the fire. I think that that the pot is unproportionately uh, uh placed over the fire where one part is really getting the flames and getting the hard part and the other part is is kind of like just staying on one side so i think that in the situation here where abby used the term fascism it is a a, a very a harsh statement but it really depicts and and paints the picture of what we're seeing here you have a government a, a group of people you know that that are in israel that seem to deem everyone in Palestine as being a potential threat or an enemy. And, you know, their lives alone may not be worth very much to the Israelis right now. And they don't mind killing them. And uh, they kind of like talk about it like she just did, you know, and uh, like uh, Emily just did when she mentioned earlier is that we could have committed genocide anytime. We have everything it takes to commit genocide. We haven't done that. But that's the same thing like holding a gun to someone's head, you know, and telling them that you could kill them. You know, it's, it's not very different. And uh, for her not to even recognize that. And Pierce, again, really disappoints me because he seems to superficially agree with uh, Abby on certain instances and plays devil's advocate extremely well. And also seems to agree more when he uses that question which they all throw, do you condemn the, you know, the attacks on October 7th? Puts people, you know, what I call, uh, it's a moral impositional uh, statement. You know, they, they're putting their moral, a moral imposition here because now when they say yes or no, it kind of automatically gives the impression that they believe in everything that Hamas does and they're supporting Hamas and, and the attacks, which is not true. You can actually answer that question and say that, no, I don't believe that the attacks were uh, right in any way, but I do, however, understand why something like that could be a potential in a situation as the one that Israel and Palestine is in right now. You can say that without having condemnation, but posing that question the way that, that they always pose it from the side of Israel, and obviously we know which side Pierce is on, you know, when they keep doing that, they cannot keep using this moral imposition to extract, you know, uh, an answer out of and the person's character. We don't know anything about uh, Abby here, but we are learning about her as she speaks. And she seems to speak with great understanding and great concern. And that's all I need to know right there. She has understanding and concern for the welfare of all beings, not just Israel. Where on the other hand, you have Emily Schrader, who is kind of teetering off to one side a bit more where she's you know constantly saying well what about they did this what about it when they did this you know doesn't that condone something doesn't that mean something and she's kind of looking for excuses for the vile uh you know uh comments that she's making towards the people in palestine 
and condemning them all as basically terrorists. You're either for us or you're against us, basically, is what she's saying. I disagree with her on that. I do agree with looking at everything equally, you know, with the same amount of concern, but not uh, painting a picture where one side is much worse than the other. That is not really uh, conducive to anything, except if you have propaganda in it and you want to create a narrative and enforce that narrative. That's the only time that this type of allegations that they're making, you know, could be upheld in some way. And that's basically what they're doing is trying to make allegations indirectly. That's all that is. Sit, uh, as, a, as, a, as a person who studies war, history, you can sit as a person who studies history. history. Hmm. Emily, 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 you're doing the exact same thing and you're projecting it on me. Okay, so do you condemn the actions of Israel for killing 13,000 children? I don't accept that 13,000 children have been killed. That hasn't okay, been, see, this is, this is the problem. This is the problem. But it depends on the context of what's happening. Do I condemn the actions of the state of Israel? Sitting up there and denying Palestinians Absolutely. their reality. Do I think Israel is always You're right? You're denying Palestinians not. their reality. This is why Palestinians Israel have to shoot their dead friends on camera. Please. Do I think everything Israel has done, even in this war, is correct? No. There's no problem with saying that. So I just want to say something. That finally when Abby starts to speak up, that all of a sudden Pierce Morgan is yelling over them saying don't speak over one another and he didn't really do that when emily was speaking over everyone he continued to speak to her there's a bias here guys there's definitely a bias what has been wrong what have they done i, I already said the same thing hang on abby hang on abby, hang on, abby. Hang on, abby. Hang on, abby. emily tell me what is wrong. wow so now he's doing the exact thing that he should have done to emily before he's actually stopping her from speaking stopping abby from speaking what a prick. Okay, I'm going to just call it as it is. He's biased. He's completely biased here. Tell's done that's just wrong in your eyes. I think that that should have been a priority from the beginning uh, in order to plan a safe evacuation route before they implemented a military plan. I think that everything has been done too late. Okay, Abby, what would you say Hamas have done wrong? Uh, I, look, I, again, I'm not going to sit up here. I don't even know really what happened. You can't find anything. To condemn rape. You can't find anything. Anything. First of all, they're bringing something into it that they have no factual proof on. Nobody has any record of this. Uh, nobody has any uh, videotape of it. But yet, she, they want her to condemn something that nobody has actually proven with uh, evidence-based, factual evidence. Okay. Uh, this is another problem that we have. They, they All of the wrong. lies that have been perpetrated. Look, Look Hamas, Hamas killing, killing civilians. civilians. Uh, I'm, I'm sure atrocities were committed on both sides, sides. Um, on, on October 7th. I, I'm on sure October 7th, atrocities were, were killed. Killed. I don't know, what, what atrocities I don't know did how many civilians were killed by Israel. Emily, 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 I can't even hear myself talk because you just can't stop talking. There's so many lies that were put out by Israeli authorities that it's really hard to parse through. Look. I mean, I mean, we don't know how many civilians, civilians were killed in the, in the crossfire, crossfire by Israeli, Israeli soldiers um, um, and listening to the Hannibal, Hannibal directive. directive. So, so look, the, the, the mass rape, the beheading babies, babies, the, the, the ripping, ripping the babies out of pregnant women's, women's stomachs. stomachs. I mean, all, all of these things, things are such egregious lies okay. that I really just the, can't okay. sit up here and condemn things that I don't even know what happened. What about the atrocities which Hamas recorded and filmed themselves and then posted to the world to brazenly boast about what they were doing? What about that? Look, nothing, nothing that Hamas, Hamas did on October 7th compares to what Israel has done in response. No, no, I'm asking you a direct question about the fact that they boasted I, you, you, about you, the mass the murder is, they were committing. You guys just make it all about October 7th, and that's what I'm saying. It, it all, you have to condemn them. killing civilians is wrong. So what Kill, they, you have to condemn them. killing civilians is wrong. So what killing they did, civilians is wrong. So what Hamas did on October 7th so was wrong. So what does that make what Israel on, has done? Hang on, I'm trying to unpick your argument. So, so if, if it's, it's wrong, wrong to kill, kill civilians, civilians, were Hamas, Hamas wrong, wrong to do what they did on October the 7th, 7th given, given how many civilians were brutally murdered? Are you are doing the same thing to Emily? And if I'm not, just asking why? you, do you think it was wrong? Why are you not sitting her do you and think it was wrong? Her? Is it wrong to kill 13,000 Why can't you answer a simple question? Is it wrong to kill 100? I already said it. 
I already I said it. Said well, it. Well, I'm not going to sit here. You're 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 you're, 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 you're basically, basically comparing, comparing Hamas, Hamas to Israel. No, I'm not comparing anything. You really said just now, yes, unless, I'm, unless, I'm unless I'm mistaken, you just, just said to me that the killing of innocent civilians is wrong. I then asked you, fairly self-evidently, I think, the question. In that, in that case, case, given that Hamas, Hamas showed us on tape them, them killing, killing civilians, civilians, innocent civilians, on October the 7th, do you accept that, that was wrong? wrong? Yes, yes or no? You, you saw, saw, you saw, saw the tape? tape? Yes, yes. They, they, they showed us. You saw the tape of them killing innocent civilians? Yes, they literally, yes, they literally broadcast it to the world. world. Yes, yes, we all did. And so do Israeli soldiers. Fine, why can't you... Forget it. Israel like watching, for a moment. It's like watching... Forget you, Israel for a moment. It's like watching Nazis... If it's wrong to kill innocent civilians, Abby, on social did, media. If it's wrong to kill innocent civilians, I'll ask you one more time. You haven't got to answer. Up to you. But viewers are watching this and they know you haven't answered. You think it's wrong to kill innocent civilians? I already civilians? answered. I, 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 think, I think it's wrong to kill innocent civilians. So what Hamas did was wrong? She's not going to answer. Well, I let her... Because she's smart. She knows exactly what that is. You're placing her in a moral imposition right now. You're placing her and trying to... This is an ad hominem attack disguised as a moral stance. Again, you're asking her what her personal opinion is on the subject matter and how she feels about it instead of addressing it as she should uh, as being a professional uh, person that represents... Uh, the version of the story that doesn't depict what Israel is is uh, is claiming, and she's standing not on the side of of Palestine or on the side of Israel, but she's very much basically trying to point out on an international uh, basis that there are crimes that are being committed, uh, definitely on both sides, but one is more prominent because one has an entire army has the ability, which Emily also acknowledged, to basically destroy and obliterate the other country. So the, if you turn that around, instead of talking about it as an international incident or an international case uh, you know, of human rights, then you automatically are attacking her character for her not answering a question that she should never have been asked in the first place. This whole thing was not about, and is not about, what Abby Martin thinks about it personally. It shouldn't be about that. But why is Pierce Morgan and this other person here that looks like an alien with a smile on her face, uh, Emily Schrader, allowing that to happen? You know, they're both in on this, obviously. So she, Abby Martin, really has her hands full here. And she's being put in a very moral, impositional stance here where they're attacking her on a personal basis of the choices and uh, that she'll make whether or not she condemns this or condemns that considers Hamas this or considers Hamas that that's not what this issue is about it's about what's happening right now in Israel and Palestine and on an international level and how it affects human rights and they keep trying to change this and divert it back to her that's the only way that they can get the people that are dumb enough to actually believe this and misunderstand it and not take it not understand it for what it really is what it's supposed to be this is what they do to the viewers consistently and this is the reason as a matter of fact why they don't like when i speak because i can point these things out and explain it to you exactly what they're doing and why they would do it so this is pretty cheap on pierce's part and on uh emily's part as well because you know it's 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 pathetic it's really pathetic answer if she wants to Last time, I'm going to ask you. So. I don't. I, I already look. I already told you. I'm not going to sit here and condemn what Hamas did. Right. I understand why. I, I don't have to agree with what Hamas did, right? To understand that wasn't my why question. things happened. I just happened. asked you whether to the understand mass why violence was, was wrong. To understand why there's blowback policies. Yes, absolutely, it was right. Blowback. But was it wrong? Hundred percent. Was it wrong? I'm not, look, I, I don't know how, how much you want to just go around the mulberry bush like this. This is a fairly um, straightforward can, question. Just... I don't see. It's also improper to ask her that question. As a talk show host, you should know better. It's extremely improper because it has nothing to do with the basis of an international affairs. You know, uh, when you look at an international incident, which is taking place right now as we speak, if I was being interviewed and you asked me that question, I would literally go tell you to fuck yourself. She doesn't do that. 
But being, you know, who I am, the spiritual philanthropist, I'd be blunt and honest with you. I would tell you you're pathetic and you shouldn't be hosting this program. Why? Because you seem to have a bias towards uh, the people of Palestinian descent. And, and, and you keep somehow supporting almost every time that you speak the basic, the, you know, if you look at it for what it is, the genocide and destruction of an entire people and a place. And you're okay with that. Do you think that's okay? You know, that's what you should turn around and say. Do you think it's okay for what's going on with the genocide in Palestine? And I guarantee you he would turn it around and say, well, I don't have to answer that. That's not what's happening. And they continue to go through this diverting the truth and changing it. As soon as they ask those questions, they divert it back to her character. Ad hominem at attack disguises a moral stance, you know, and uh, makes makes you question her ethics and then makes you question her as a human being because she won't answer that question. She has a right not to answer that question because it has nothing to do with what's actually going on, you know. So that's wrong on, on both Emily's part and Pierce's part. They should both know better than to do that. And the people should, uh, if you're listening to this, this is why more people need to listen to what I have to say because they can understand it a little bit better. See how anyone can come on is a show like Israel this. Is doing how is can wrong. you take so part in a show like this? Say what what killing is innocent civilians is wrong. But I'm not going to tell you what Hamas did on October 7th was wrong. It makes, it makes no, no sense, Abby. No, no sense. sense. I'm, I'm not, not going to sit here and condemn Hamas. Okay. I'm not going to do the obligatory right. ritual, I hear you. ritual that everyone is browbeaten into doing. I'm just not going to do it. I think what Israel is doing right now is think your denial. I think your denial that what they did was a heinous act of terrorism is actually in its way as bad. I said, I I'm said about to finish my sentence. I said atrocities were committed, yeah. and I think they atrocities wrong. are wrong, and killing innocent civilians are wrong. So Hamas were wrong Again, to do it. Again, you're browbeating me into trying to I'm say Hamas was wrong. I'm just asking for a answer. This was a horrific terrorist attack. I, I, think, I already I, answered you. I think your failure to say that Hamas did something wrong is terrible. I think Emily's failure to accept that 12, 13,000 children have been killed is he also terrible, right? I think that the denial going on on both sides here, which I hear, is frankly appalling. It's yeah, but the difference is that you don't hear him like really scrutinizing uh, any of the people from Israel when they come on there. He doesn't really get to scrutinizing him, uh, scrutin scrutinizing them uh, the way that he does the people that are saying that what Israel is doing is wrong as well. The people that are standing up and saying, hey, Israel is breaking rules, international rules of human rights, you're basically continuously using ad hominem attacks in disguise as moral stances and ethical stances, and you're continuously doing this over and over. Now you're playing devil's advocate, playing both sides, because you know you have to hold your status as being the host, and you're trying to kind of justify it this way by using your role right now as the establishment for the basis that you've asked both sides an equal question. One question doesn't really hold in moral imposition. Uh, you have as much factual basis for both questions, none, none less, but you're yet you're still harping on, on the side of, uh, 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 you know, on the moral stance and the character of the person who is saying that I won't take a stance the way you want me to. You know, I'm going to do it the way I know how. And I give Abby all the credit for doing that because as a woman, you know, uh, representing what she does, she has a little bit more tougher time to do this. And uh, we know how, uh, you know, if you go against or you say anything in opposition to what Israel says or what people who believe in that ideology and what's going on or that narrative, rather, uh, they're going to also condemn her as well. So she is taking chances here. I have to give her that. You know, so she is taking definitely big chances here. Emily, the Palestinian Health Authority numbers historically have turned out to be proven to be the pretty Palestinian accurate. The Authority, the Ministry of Health has been instructed that's, explicitly that's by not Hamas not point. to report combatants. That's not my point. The numbers are not accurate not and they point. cannot be trusted. As I've just said to you, historically, if you go and check historically, the Palestinian Health Authority run by Hamas, their numbers have turned out to be broadly accurate. That is why they are being treated now as reasonably accurate numbers. There can be no doubt from the footage we've seen from the hospitals of endless children, from the bomb sites, endless children being killed, that there are thousands of children being killed. 
to try and deny that. To try and I'm not denying the children are being killed. I'm not denying that you don't there believe have been the numbers. casualties. And you're, you're I'm trying saying to avoid... we don't know the numbers yet. And we cannot state definitively, especially if the source is Hamas, that 13,000 children have been killed. You have actually no... Okay, so aside from that, ask her the question then. If I was Pierce right now, I would switch it over. But he's not going to do that. He's not smart enough to do that. Or they're being told not to do this. Then you ask her the question, what if, hypothetically speaking, 13,000 children were being killed by Israel? Would you condemn it? You know, change it on her. Let her ask the hypothetical question. See what she says. You know, because most of it right now is not based on anything. They don't have any evidence for hardly any of the things they're talking about. Right now, it's just all, you know, hearsay type of thing. No idea that 9,000 Hamas terrorists have been killed. According to IDF intelligence, right. yeah, we do. So you believe IDF intelligence, but you won't believe a the terrorist other side organization? On Absolutely. I would believe the IDF over a U.S. and U.K. designation. Even if other independent agencies have corroborated the Palestinian Health Authority numbers. You still what independent believe? agencies? The United Nations? Yeah. This and, is not independent, as has been proven and, by this war itself. And other Members of agencies. UNRWA are actually active terrorists. Some of them took part in the October 7th massacre. Right, so here's my problem with this debate. No evidence here's my problem with the debate for both of you. There is a level of denial on both sides, which I think people in the middle who don't have a horse in the race, right, who are looking at this from afar, they're aghast at the level of self-denial. They cannot believe, Abby, that you're not prepared to say what Hamas did was wrong. And they cannot believe, uh, Emily, that on your side, you simply won't accept the obvious the fact numbers that of Hamas? thousands and thousands of children are I being... Did, I no, didn't no, say that. You thousands won't... of people are dying. But How we many... do not know the numbers. And no, I'm not going to accept the numbers from Hamas. Right, so you don't... Have... Again, it's not about the numbers. It's really about the actual uh, the actual event itself, You know, the, the action of what's happening. Uh, if she doesn't want to acknowledge that, she continues to bypass it by talking about the numbers. The numbers is a good way to scapegoat and divert the attention from addressing the actual moral stance that she should be taking by addressing the idea of children being killed by Israel, which which is not new. It's very old from the very uh, time that these wars broke out in Israel uh, and all this fighting started. Uh, they've been able to use this same method of diverting the attention away from the true matter and using uh the idea that i won't believe the numbers that i got or any of the information i got from certain uh parties right and uh if they keep doing that they're going to continuously keep diverting and this causes what, what this does is that she's trying to basically uh use numbers and people people hear the word numbers they think facts right and when you think facts you think evidence evidence based uh facts right and we use this in science as well everything that you do has to be uh evidence based by using facts but she's using it in a wrong context here because she's trying to say that the basis the foundation of where this comes from uh any of the information can't be trusted the sources that's what she's trying to say really and the sources are also intertwined with not just one source, not just Hamas, but with the United Nations and other groups that also are corroborating the same story. So she's not believing them all, and she's not saying that. She's continuously harping on on the uh, Hamas group and the Palestinian people that are in support of the Hamas groups. And basically by doing that is nullifying any chance that they have to raise awareness to what's happening in Palestine with those these children are in, you know, instead of acknowledging it and and uh, getting to the, you know, the initial cause of it and how they can actually solve this problem, she's choosing to divert, distract, you know, and I think that's wrong. That shows that they have no conscience, no conscience of who they're killing and who they're going to kill. They have none whatsoever. This right here proves it. Pretty sad, guys. Pretty sad and pretty scary. Have to then be accountable for the deaths of so many children. I disagree. You simply say, I, think Israel I don't know what the number is, therefore I can't Israel, ask them out. I don't agree with that. I think Israel needs to exercise as much caution as possible. Should they kill fewer children? 
If possible, of course. Yeah. Of course. You accept they've killed too many children. How would you? I don't think that. Uh, yes, first of all, but I also. You do. Think, well, that's it. See, that's. But I also think. Okay, it's look, we're getting, we are getting somewhere. Many of these casualties. We're getting somewhere. Are a result of that being is used as human shields. Actually, what you just said is an important. Okay, hold on. Can we hang on, hang on, Abby. I'm going to come really to really you. Quickly. But that's yeah. an important admission, yeah. actually, by yeah. Emily. That she thinks Israel, Israel has killed too many children. children. I, I think, think that is a healthy moment, moment well, I don't in think this any debate. Should be killed Fine. Fine. You just said you think <laughs> they're killing too many children. Don't One back. is too many. <laughs> Fine, but it's not laughable, is it? Uh, okay, let me. If I could go back and and have the ability to show you where she agreed with earlier that it showed she was using statistics saying that seventy percent of the people in Palestine agreed with the attacks on October 7th this way in saying that she also said that it gives the idea that it was okay for them to bomb the Palestinian people and kill the children that were being killed at that time but she just thought just now it must have just clicked into her mind that wait a second I can't say that on on international TV where the entire world will see that because then they might get smart and judge me for the fact that I've already judged them, <laughs> you know, and that's what's going on right here. She's backtracking right now and, and trying to eat her words. But what you said earlier, you condone the idea of use of lethal force against those children and against them losing their lives because potentially they could become terrorists is what you stated. Indirectly, you stated that. Now all of a sudden, oh, if one children dies, it's a big deal. You're full of shit. Whoever you are, you're full of shit. And a lot of the people that are that she backs up are full of shit. They will continue to commit crimes like that abroad and here in the United States. What they do here in the United States is not exactly going around killing you with weapons. If they could, they probably would. But how they do it, they destroy you financially. That's what they do. They take away all resources that you have, and they basically put you in a place where you cannot afford to live and do anything. That's what they do here in this country. And once things are uncovered, there are people that can extract the information and, and and figure out how these things are being done. And I'm sure they're working around the clock now hard. And at some point, that information is going to come out to the public. You're going to know who your enemy is right here in this country, in America, and around the world. You're going to see who's perpetrating these things and why they're being perpetrated. There's no way you can stay on top all the fucking time. There's no way unless you have a system set up for you to do so. And that goes for anything across the board. So I don't give a shit what they say. You have to think logically. That's one of the reasons I love physics is because you have ways of proving these things, you know, and that's why I love it. That's why I'll always continue to love the idea of science. It's uh, terrible. Right. So, so I, I, I just, just think that until you, you can admit on both sides, sides what's, what's actually going, going on that we can all see with our own eyes, eyes. Uh, I, I think, think you don't get anywhere with this debate. Let me ask you this. We talk about genocide and we talk about how this all plays out at the end. How does this end, Abby? I mean, how do you actually get peace when we can't even have a debate without people screaming at each other? Uh, but we now know that a lot of Gaza has been leveled. I don't know if they can go back and live there, Gazans. I don't know how many more are going to get killed if Israel attacks the, the, the Rafa refugee camp in his efforts to, to finish off Hamas. I don't know these answers. What I do know is I find it very, very implausible that at the end of this, it simply all gets sorted out quite quickly and the Gazans go back to their destroyed homes, it all gets rebuilt, and they'll live happily ever after. So how does it end? Right, I mean, well, no construction material has been allowed in for quite some time, so there is no rebuilding effort that's possible, especially when you've decimated the entire strip, demolished every aspect of civilian life, surgically striking doctors alongside their entire families, killing over 100 journalists, many in targeted assassinations alongside their entire families. I mean, really the best and brightest in Palestinian society in Gaza has been destroyed. Being in pillaging women's lingerie, I mean, it really is depraved levels of sadism going on here. How does it end? A negotiated settlement immediately. Um, I think that what Hamas is offering is not beyond the pale. It would be easy for Israel to comply with the demands. If we look at the five-day truce that happened several months back, uh, the Palestinian hostages that Israel's been keeping. They're not called hostages, but they should be because they're just political prisoners that are languishing in military detention. The vast majority of those political prisoners were not charged with anything. Um, 30 of them were kids for throwing stones. 
So this is, this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. When Hamas says release our hostages, that's who they're talking about. Um, when they say the removal of Israeli troops from Gaza, I don't see how that couldn't be complied with. I mean, look, there should be a negotiated settlement. If you want the hostages back today, that could happen. And that's why there's thousands of Israelis protesting in this Well, Hamas has just rejected the latest uh, peace deal offering. Well, okay, is it a permanent ceasefire? Because not if you're not just... Okay, I just want to point something out. Look how quick uh, Pierce Morgan is to interject without even letting her finish. And uh, just think about that. There's a reason that he does that. Okay. Talking about a six-week ceasefire before. Well, then, well, then, yeah. I mean, Israel's saying they're just going to continue the genocide after six weeks. How is that? Um, do you think? Let me ask you this before we go back to Before we go back to Emily, let me ask you this, Abby. Do you think Hamas should stay in power at the end of this? He shows no fucking respect to uh, Abby Martin. She's talking, and he's talking over her like it's okay to do so. And she's been totally respectful from the very get-go. And this other one, the clown-looking woman here that looks like an evil clown, she just gets away with what... You could look, at, look at her face. Do you see any love and kindness there at all? Look at their faces. If you look at a little, little weasel and a little rat, that's this guy right here. He talks about all these things about, uh, you know, how he's in support of this and support of that and is against this and against that. He did a video, which I'm going to bring up at some point, where he sits down with a group of cartel and talks about what happens in certain areas with them and you know what, let me tell you when people are that comfortable around people at that level the way he was he looked like he was right at home when you deal with human trafficking you're dealing with those people a hundred percent that this guy has been dealing with that and i'm just saying just based on the way that he was so comfortable around them you try going and sitting around people that kill people for a living and see how comfortable you'll feel, okay? So that that's what I'm saying. Mark Twain said it best. The truth is stranger than fiction. The truth is stranger than fiction. That is also the name of my comic book. Under Rav Shiva. R-A-V space S-H-I-V-A Shiva. You can find it on Amazon most of the time unless they keep hiding it like usual. I have enemies, guys, so I'm sorry. They're going to keep coming at me, and I have no choice but to keep trying to do my thing. And I'm only expounding my perspective and my truth, and I'm trying to gain knowledge and to open your minds to see, just like Mark Twain said, that the truth is stranger than fiction, guys. This guy, when you see that video of him, and as innocent as he looks here, hanging out with some of the... If you've ever seen any videos, which I have on the cartel on how they carve people up while they're alive and talk to them, letting them know why they're getting carved up and the gruesome killings that they do. And he was very, he seemed like he was right at home, no fear, like he felt very safe. That tells me something. That tells me you've intermingled with these people and dealt with them before. There's no way a normal human being, including myself, where I've been through a lot of shit in my life, even had to fight for my life since I was a kid, and I would not be that comfortable around these people. This is in no way condemning whoever they are. They live their lives. They have their karmas. I'm not saying anything against them, but I'm saying him. Even they know that he's a rat. They'll have to know that if they are the people they say they are. Okay? And I know a rat when I see one. It's this guy right here. He's a weasel, you know? Look, I'm... I'm whatever the Palestinians want, that's what, do you that's what they will do. I mean, I, I think... Look, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the Palestinians of who their leadership should be. What I will say is Hamas isn't actually the most popular faction in Palestinian society. And Hamas is only the result of Israeli policy of a brutal apartheid ethnic cleansing and occupation. That's why Hamas exists. Any type of Palestinian leadership that has arisen is a direct result of Israeli brutality. So I'm not going to speak on behalf of the leadership of the Gaza Strip. I understand um, that there will be should, let me ask you one more and question. that inevitably... Okay. Shouldn't Violence will happen. Shouldn't Netanyahu... Yo, Pierce, shut your fucking mouth, man. Give her the respect of finishing her lines here of what she's saying. Let her finish what she's saying. What an asshole you are for even speaking up like that. I hate to say that, but I can't continue to watch this man over talk over, you know, uh, speak over this woman here who's actually trying to express herself. You can't hear what she's saying to make any sense of it. I don't know if that's strategically timed so people lose on what she's saying here because you can't hearing both of them can anyone else understand what she's saying when he starts to talk over her? 
No, you can't. So it takes away from the argument. Maintain in place. Should Netanyahu remain in power in Israel after this? No. No. Oh, hang on. I think that the Israeli people have spoken about Netanyahu, but I think that Netanyahu is the tip of the iceberg. To blame this all on Netanyahu and his so-called right no, should he, should, should wash away should he stay in power, the foundation question. of what Israel is. Should he, should he stay in power after this? No, he's committing genocide. No. So you're prepared to say to the Israeli people, no, well, the, your the thing. leaders should go. Here's the thing. You're not the prepared Israeli to people, tell Palestinian the Israeli people, people are out. that their the leadership Israeli, should go. But here's the, the thing. Here. Again, Okay, let me point something out to what he's doing. Every question that he asks her, if you notice, is a setup. Okay? Listen to what he just said. When she said no, what's her name? Uh, Emily Schrader just said no before anyone else did, right? She's on the side of Israel. Uh, Abby Martin was explaining herself, and she said no as well. But as soon as she said no, he jumped on and, and automatically interjected something else. So he was setting her up by asking that question to then come with what he just said. So you don't think that uh, Hamas should change their leaders or, or the Palestinian people should get rid of Hamas, you know, and change, you know, their, their, their leaders. But how, how stupid is that? He's a man supposedly that's intelligent, right? You're asking one question. How does that one question automatically lead to the other question when she doesn't even you never asked her that question she never answered it and you're interjecting it and proposing the idea and insinuating on top of it that that's what her answer would be so therefore right there he's ex you know using extreme coercion tactics you know and 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 basically before she can even get to know the question and answer it he's already condemning her for something she never answered and was never asked in the first place. You know, you guys have to really stop and look at what they're doing. They're strategic, man. I hope she's smart enough to say something about that as well. And the inconsistency. Here, the Israeli people are out in the streets in the tens of thousands saying Netanyahu yeah. should go. It's there are many Palestinians who want Hamas to go corrupt. too, I'm sure. The and point is, you, you, made a, you made a big deal of well, saying... Then, then have would, an election. You made a big deal of saying... An election. You made a big deal of saying it's not down to me to tell Palestinian people about their leadership, and then you, immediately I give you the, the open door on that, and you are, yeah, absolutely, you should go. Totally inconsistent. Yeah, but you never uh, asked her that question in the first place. You asked one question. Again, I'm going to point it out. You asked only one question about the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, being uh, taken out of office. You did not in any way whatsoever through this entire interview ask if uh, she thought the same thing about the uh, the Palestinians, if they wanted to get rid of Hamas. So therefore, you yourself just made yourself look like the jackass that you really are. And you're making insinuations and condemnations based on what? Your own, your own ideas? <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is your own opinions. You're making it based on your own opinions. That's what you call an opinionated asshole, okay? Most opinionated, excuse my language, most opinionated assholes usually do this exact tactic right here. She should, they should point this out, man. I don't know why they're not pointing this out unless this is all pre-programmed and this is what they want people to see. That's the only thing I could think of because she should be smart enough to acknowledge it. Look, I'm not working up there. I'm, I'm not a part of this, but I can point it out. You know, why isn't she pointing it out? She should be standing up for herself right now. And, 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 and saying, I never said anything about that. You're, you're insinuating something that you never asked me, you know, and giving an answer to it for me. She should be saying this. Well, he no. should be tried at The Hague and put in The Hague. And That's a different question. question. I mean, he's committing different genocide. Different question. But you he's say you can't genocide. interfere in Palestinian politics, but you're very prepared to interfere in Israeli politics. Uh, let me ask you, Emily. Well, because he's committing genocide. Okay. He's I brought up earlier when I said that he was attacking her indirectly with an ad hominem attack is that she was speaking you can't attack her uh personally when she's speaking from a a a place that is an international uh, domain okay because it doesn't reflect her opinion should have no reflection in this it should be based accordingly on what's happening in international affairs and if they're breaking uh human rights uh laws that's what should be addressed, not how she feels about it. And that's where this asshole is, is making things really bad for this smug-looking clown to be able to look smug like the way she is. Spelled out crystal clearly, it is genocide. It is moving that way, I have to say. Uh, Emily, let me ask you the same question. How does this end? 
I mean, I think that Israel, as well as Palestinian leadership, needs to work together with other partners, especially in the Arab world, to help rebuild Gaza. Israel isn't interested in occupying Gaza in any sort of permanent way. That is not something we want. We withdrew from that territory. We do not want it. Um, and I would like to see Palestinians be able to return to their homes safely and elect some form of government or leadership. I don't I believe anything this woman says or, or, or uh, Pierce Morgan, because like I said, you have to look at this for what it is. Across the world, people of color have been getting the shit end of the stick from the very beginning. They're going to continue to get it. I don't even believe this woman, Abby, that much anymore because she's not saying the thing. If you're that smart, you're that fucking smart, and you have degrees in this area, you're not mentioning the things I'm mentioning, which is really, uh, a, you know, based on, on what I'm hearing, you know, and I don't have the same background as you do. I don't have whatever it is that your, uh, whatever your education level is. I'm based on other uh, types of education. But this is why I always think that having an education in physics always makes a difference in the way your mind works. Um, I'm going to say that at least. But what I can tell you is that this whole thing is done here to make Abby look bad in some way and make the people that Abby represents to look bad like they don't know what they're talking about. So I believe that this might be all orchestrated for that one sole purpose. This may be another form of propaganda from what I can see. If you really wanted to talk to someone that can make a difference, you talk to people like me that can break this shit down and put you in your place, not to these people who may have just been put there just to, uh, you know, continue the charade that you guys are putting on, you know? And that's what I think is going on here. I think it's shameful uh, that you don't allow people to really express, you know, the truth of the matter and to point out the bullshit and fallacies that you guys are creating. That is able to actually implement one day in the future, some sort of peace process. And I think that involves working together with community leaders who are on the ground that are not affiliated with Hamas. Now, it, did you accept that anything going forward, which looks like a peace deal, would be a two-state solution? And that Palestine, in that respect, would be an identifiable state confirmed by Israel, and that they would no longer be dependent on Israel for the flow of food, and water, and fuel, and all the other things which Israel has had some control over now for decades. Um, in the long term, of course, yeah. I, I do think do. that there needs to be some sort Again, of, of solution. Uh, the, the problem that we're facing today, Many Israelis don't. I believe, is actually the radicalization element within Palestinian society because Palestinian leaders don't have a mandate to lead, not Hamas and not Mahmoud Abbas, and we don't have a leadership that's able to implement uh, any kind of peace deal in any borders. And when we have I actually that... Don't, I don't think Netanyahu's had any interest in a peace deal either. I think he's been quite happy watching Hamas and the Palestinian Authority at each other's throats uh, since the early 2000s. I don't think he's ever shown any real desire to find peace. That's why well, I think. I'm, I'm that's why I personally, I personally <laughs> think. I personally think both Israel yes, and the Palestinian state they, they both need new leadership that actually wants to fight, to forge genuine peace in a two-state solution, which offers security and safety to both sides. And maybe okay, he's talking about he wants to actually see peace and security on both sides, but yet his language doesn't depict that. His language, if you look at all his, because I've gone through every single, almost every single one of his uh, ho uh, uh, shows here, Uncensored, where he, where he spoke to Bassem Youssef and, and other people on here about the exact same issue. And his whole thing through the entire thing is condemning the October 7th attacks, which is the exact same gauge that Israel uses and all of the supporters of the Israel genocide on Palestine. They all use that exact same term. So he's full of shit. Anybody can notice. If you notice that, you'll know he's full of shit. That's why I told you, you can sit around the cartel who are known criminals, man. They, they're most lethal criminals, criminals in the world and possess also the ability to human traffic on very high levels. Drugs and human trafficking go hand in hand together. He hung out with them like they were best buddies and friends. I didn't when I watched it. I never understood how this guy could sit so comfortably with knowing what those people do and act like he was talking to them like they were best friends and they've known each other for years. Most likely they have, guys. That's why I said if anybody ever leaks the the names of the people involved with that stuff, all hell will break out everywhere. Why? Because they'll see how we the people have been being taken advantage of from the very beginning. And people will want to put their foot down at that point and take a stand against it. That's why I say that these things are all uh, orchestrated before they're put on the air.
It will that. take time, but you know what? But I remember, I remember in Northern Ireland, people, people saying it was equally, equally intractable, and they, and they eventually got there. You just need new leadership that knows what it's doing, who can actually believe in the concept of peace. We've got to leave it there. Uh, Abby Martin, Emily Schrader, thank you for a spirited debate. I appreciate it very much indeed. Guys, you know, I, I hope that you open your minds and you look at things for what they really are. Don't be, uh, you know, sidelined or... or misconstrued by the looks on their face by the setting of their backgrounds by any of the things you see the truth is stranger than fiction you notice that abby had the same look on her face the entire time you know i don't know anyone in my lifetime that can keep the exact same look in their eyes and their face unless they, unless they were trained to do so this whole thing is propaganda against palestine all of it and, it, and it's 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 to show that maybe the people uh, that are that are condemning the attacks and the genocide that's being committed in palestine don't know what they're talking about and don't have a good basis because if we were to look at this she didn't really defend herself very damn well i think i defended her better than she defended herself and i'm not even uh you know i have no uh background to do so or credentials the way she does maybe i do i don't know but i can tell you that it was very one-sided and indirectly one-sided as well if you listen to everything that I said through this broadcast. And this is the reason that they will always try to censor me and stop me from speaking is because I could point out their fallacies and their, their uh, you know, the chink in their armor every time they make mistakes. And most people can't uh, point those mistakes out, but I can. But the reason that I can is because, thank God, God gifted me with insight and this insight is what got me to write this two years before Facebook actually came out and admitted it to the public. Look at the date, guys, November 23rd, 2016, when I wrote about the dopamine addiction and the like button. Okay, this is proof that I'm telling the truth. My educational background and my life story of what I went through after 9-11 corroborates all of it. I'm a human being. I'm flawed just like everybody else. But I do have an opinion that matters, and I will continue to give that opinion over and over again and keep pointing out the inconsistencies and the bullshit that we keep seeing over and over again guys unless you guys take a stand and and start to realize when the wool is being pulled over your eyes and look at the people in the past that have gotten taken out including the united states president john f kennedy realize what we're dealing with not just here but around the world there are a group of people who are in control and they will do anything and kill anyone to continue to maintain and sustain what they have. This is what we're living with, guys. So when when people stand up against what's happening, you'll be condemned and be called crazy, just like Dave Chappelle and everybody else have been called crazy. And they will attack you in every different which way they can. But you, the people, we, the people, can make the difference. Hit that subscribe button. Support me so I can give you more and tell you more. Guys, without your support, I can't do this. I can't emphasize that anymore. I've had 20 years of my life taken from me. Don't let it be another 20. I'm already 53. Let me help you, and you help me. It's a mutual thing here, guys. Look, I love each and every one of you. I want you to know that I'm doing this for you, not just for me. There's nothing for me to gain out of it. We all leave these lives at some point, some sooner than others. But I'm dedicating the rest of my life to fighting this fight. I'm dedicating it. Why? Because I know what it's like to be oppressed. I know what it's like to live in other people's houses as a child and not have the ability to state what you want and how the narrative can keep changing all on account of the people who are in charge and who have the power. I know what that feels like from a personal basis. Okay? I don't just con immediately condemn anyone. I'll never do that. You have to look at their circumstances. How did they grow up? What happened to them? They might actually have turned out much better than they should have if you get, take the time to examine them from their past and present and see how you know what what the circumstances were and how they were affected guys i'm going to leave you with that like i always do i hope that it's it's on a good note i always do wish and pray for everybody to have enough to eat uh to all have great health wealth and happiness and may we share in abundance this way guys be kind to each other be compassionate forgive each other you know this is this is taught not by me but by many great people beings that were here on earth and i follow that same pattern as well i hope i see you in the next video guys uh, i'll talk to you this is rob shiva i am the spiritual philanthropist this is the daily sutra 
I will see you guys soon. Okay, guys? See you then. Have a great one. <laughs>